How's everyone this morning? Good. Where are you from? Just call it out all at once. Where are you from? Nice. Nice. All right. Good. Um, my name is Avram Willig. It's on the board. Uh, just to take a moment, to look, just to drop an intro about myself. Um, I'm Jewish, um, white, male. Um, I come from the Bronx, so watch out. Watch yourself. Um, been in Israel for about 16 years. Future Ganesha Torah about eight years. Uh, I have one wife. I have eight kids. I live in Beit Shemesh. Any questions? Okay. So we're ready to start. Morning. You want to close the door, please? Thank you. Uh, the topic uh, that we're going, to be, we're going to discuss today is called National Revelation. Uh, that's the title of this class. Anybody know what national revelation is? I didn't say national elevation. That's Woodstock. Okay, I said national <laughs> revelation. Anybody? Well, it's a Jewish claim. It's, 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 one of the, it's one of the famous and very important Jewish claims. It has got to do with Mount Sinai. Okay, we're going to see this is fundamental uh, to Jewish philosophy. What happened at Mount Sinai? Anyone see uh, the Ten Commandments? It's an old <laughs> film, like your grandparents used to watch it. Anybody else? Okay. Okay, we got a bunch of hands. Okay, so here we have it on the board. You recognize that guy? Yeah, yeah anyone know who that is? Yeah. Moses? Yeah. Not Moses, actually. It's not Moses. Right? It's actually Charles Heston. Very, Charles Heston, very good. Not even Jewish. Not even Jewish. And how do you know he's not... How do you know he's, uh, He's not Moses? Well, first of all, and can anyone read that language? What language is that? Greek. Greek. Okay, so that's one reason uh, why it's not Moses, right? The, the Bible, the Torah, is, was, is given, is written in, Ten Commandments written in Hebrew. Hebrew. But there's another way you know he's not Moses, and I personally have researched this, because Moses was bald, okay? <laughs> Look at this guy, like a re, the, the real holy Jews, the holiest rabbis are bald. You hear what I'm saying? Okay, so there's no way that that's Moses. Um, okay, so uh, in, this, in this film, for those who saw it, uh, <clears throat> Moses seems to be up Mount Sinai um, getting the Torah. Okay, so who did God speak to at Mount Sinai? Moses. Ah, so but you saw the film, God speaks to? Moses, right? Wrong. Wrong. That's what I hear some of these voices. Good. And what were the Jewish people doing while God was speaking to Moses? Yeah, worshiping the golden calf. Golden, dancing around the golden calf, right? You saw the movie, right? Right? Wrong, right? Wrong again on two counts. Really important to understand that. And we're going to be looking, we're going to take a look at that. Really important to understand. Who did God speak to at Mount Sinai? The Jewish claim of national Revelation. Who did God speak to at Mount Sinai? Like you said, some of you said, all of the Jewish people, the entire nation of Israel. How many people was that? Yeah, 600,000 men between the ages of 20 and 60 equals about 3 million people. That's the claim. That's the Jewish claim. How old is that claim? Thousands, 3,000 years old, right? Anyone disagree with that claim? Guys, here, this is also important. In, in, in opening this topic, it's actually really important to understand this. This is a universal, universally accepted claim up until very recently. You see, there are 
billions of Christians in the world who, who recognize this claim to be true. Muslims. How many Muslims in the world? Well over a billion, right? A billion and a half? Who also assert this claim to be true. The whole Western world recognizes this claim to be true. Fascinating, right? Now, not only that, even the Jews agree. Now, the Jews don't agree about anything, okay? <laughs> okay? Even all the Jews agree to, uh, agree, recognize that this claim is true up until recently. Anyone know who was the first group of people to challenge this claim, to contest this claim of national revelation? You got to, you got to, you got to, you can trust the Jews to mess things up, right? The Reformed Jews about 150, 200 years ago, the first people ever to contest this claim of national revelation. Amazing, amazing. Some people come to me and say, oh, I don't want to know the truth. They listen. All the Gentiles agree it's true. They say, oh, okay, fine, it's true, it's true. It's true. Right. <laughs> okay, so um, there it is. That's just, that's, just, you know, that's just a backdrop, just a defining the terms of what, what is it exactly uh, you know, the topic that we're going to be discussing today is national revelation. So what's the difference, difference between national revelation and national relevation? Well, it's the same thing, just for, depends if you're, uh, if you're Lex Dixic or dyslexic, so you see the national relevation, but it's the same thing. <laughs> okay, so here we have it, here we have it, a claim of uh, three million people saying what they saw at Mount Sinai, and of course, what we need to discuss responsibly today at, at Discovery is... How do you know this is true? How do you know this is true? Maybe it's not true. Maybe it's just some guy made up a story. Maybe it's just a legend. A legend. So let's take a look at <clears throat> the difference between legends and historical facts. OK? Can anyone give me an example of a legend? Come on. Hercules? Hercules? Uh, not sure if that's a legend or just Greek mythology. Yeah, how about the Loch Ness Monster? Has anyone seen here the Loch Ness? No? Okay, nobody. Um, okay, Loch Ness. Give me another one. Bigfoot. Bigfoot. They're good. Bigfoot. Is Bigfoot real? No. How do you know? How do you know? <laughs> I'm offended. Maybe. <laughs> Where do you come up saying it's not real? Maybe it is. Maybe it is. Maybe. He has a really big foot, you know, that guy. How do you know he's dead? Can anyone prove to me that Bigfoot does not exist? Okay, so let's, let, let's have some examples. Let's throw some on the board. I, I did some homework here. Okay, prepared for you. Uh, does this work? Yeah, here we go. Legends. Okay, how about these? George Washington cut down his father's cherry tree. Raise your hand if you've heard that. Raise your hand if you've heard that. You haven't heard that, Rabbi Westerman? George Washington cut down his father's cherry tree. Raise your hands again. I want to see who's heard of that. OK, so a lot of people have heard of it. OK, is that, uh, is that American history? Are you sure? Millions, would you agree that millions and millions and millions of people have heard of that? Are you arguing with millions and millions and millions of people? So why is it a legend? Guys, this is really important really getting into, into the class here. This is really important. How do you, how do you? I don't know. No one saw. Right? You know the, by, by the way, you know the rest of the story? You know the story? George Washington he chops down his father's cherry tree, and his dad says, did you chop down the cherry tree? And what does George, little George say? I cannot tell a lie, famously, right? I cannot tell a lie, right? And he tells the truth. And of course, he gets elected as president of the United States, which is amazing because most presidents of the United States, the way they get elected is lying, lying right? It's actually a very interesting story, right? Doesn't that so congruous with that? Whatever, OK. In any case, so um, that's what little George says. Is it true or is it not true? The truth is, we don't know. Is it possible that little George chopped down his, cherry, his father's cherry tree? Yes or no? Absolutely. It's certainly possible. Is it a historical fact? Is it documented? Are there, are there, are there eyewitnesses? We don't know. So we call it a legend. Okay? What about the fact that George Washington, let's move over to the other side. George Washington was the first president of the United States. Raise your hand if you agree with that. Okay, okay. 
So there you have it. Would you agree it's a historical fact? Okay, I'd like to argue with you. I'd like to say that the first president of the United States was none other than Moshe Schwartz. Okay? Prove me wrong. Is it possible that Moshe Schwartz was the first president of the United States? How do you know? How do you know, right? In other words, essentially what I'm asking you is, where do you, how do you know that George Washington was the first president of the United States? How do you know that's a fact? Yeah? There's so many witnesses, and they all mm. down. Hmm. OK. OK. He said, she's, what's your name? Gabby. Gabby's telling us. What do you mean? It's, it's been verified. It's been verified, right? If I, would ask you to, if I would ask you to distinguish between a legend and a historical fact, how could you describe the difference? Right? Responsibly, we'd say, listen, one is verifiable and one is not verifiable. OK? If you can verify that it's true, we know it's true. If you can't, you don't know it's true. You don't know it's not true, but you don't know it's true. Let me give you an example, okay? I'll tell you a little story. It's a make-believe story. Once upon a time, there was an old king. And this old king had three sons who were princes. Prince Edward, <coughs> Prince Charles, and Prince Shaquille. And the old king passes on, and he forgets to write a will. And the three brothers have a big, great argument. I'm the king. No, I'm the king. No, I'm the king. And they're fighting and arguing back and forth. And nobody can prove Right? The other's wrong. They say, no, but dad wanted me to be the king. Dad wanted me to be the king. I'm, this, I'm better at this. I'm better than that. One day, Prince Shaquille walks in and he says, guys, <laughs> I got news. Dad came to me in a dream last night. And he said, Prince Shaq, you're the man. Now you're the new king. OK, guys, it's over. Checkmate, I'm the king. What do you think? If you were Prince Edward or Prince Charles, would you believe him? No. Why not? You can't prove that he had a... Excuse me, is it possible that King Dad of Blessed Mary, he came to him and he came to Prince Shaquille? It's possible. Yeah, but tomorrow night he can also come to a different one. Ah, so it's possible. What's your, young, what's your name, young woman? Aiden. Aiden. Aiden, beautiful name. Okay, our young lady here is, is absolutely right. It's possible. I think everyone would agree. Is it poss it's possible. It's possible, but who knows? It's also possible that he didn't, right? If, the, if, if Prince Edwards and Charles were you know, a little quick, they might say, hey, if dad really wanted to let us know that Shaq was the new prince, he, he might have come to, he might have come to <laughs> us in a dream to let us know. Hey, <laughs> curious, he only comes to Prince Shaq? How do you explain that, right? You get it? So if I were Prince Edward or Prince I would not believe him. Is it possible? Maybe it's, po it's possible. Maybe, the, maybe Shaq is telling the truth. But it's not verifiable. No, they have no way of knowing, and therefore, they, wouldn't, they couldn't possibly believe him. So how do we verify something to be true? One key way of verifying something to be true are eyewitnesses. Large numbers, large groups of witnesses who, who saw something happen. I'll give you an example. Okay, I come from the Bronx, the Bronx Bombers. Right? You're walking down the street outside of Yankee Stadium. The stadium is, you know, I just let out. All the fans are pouring all over the streets, right? And you're like, okay, who won? They say the Yankees. You pass 10 fans. Who won? The Yankees. 20 fans. The Yankees. 100 fans. Who won? Who won? The Yankees. 100 fans. 1,000 fans. 10,000 fans, right? The Yankees, the Yankees then is what, 70,000 seats or something? Something crazy, right? Every single person you meet, the Yankees, the Yankees, the Yankees won, the Yankees won. You go to your car, you turn on the radio, the Yankees won. You read the newspapers, the Yankees won. Is it possible that the Yankees lost? No. Yeah. Is it possible that the Yankees lost? No. What do you say there in the back? What's your name? Matt. Matt? Is it possible that the Yankees lost? Possible, but not probable. Nice. Whoa. Possible, but not probable. Maybe it's, hey. Matt says, it's possible. Maybe it's a large, great, big, giant conspiracy. <laughs> the world against Avram Willig, right? We're going to make pretend that the Yankees won. Ha, 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 we got him, right? Really, the Yankees lost, right? Maybe it's just a giant conspiracy. It's possible. You know what? Is it possible, Matt? I agree with you. It's possible. Is it possible that you're on Mars? 
Why? <laughs> you got suckered in, my man. We're all, we're all Martians. We're all just like, you know, pretending. Is that possible? Can you prove that it's not true? Yeah. Eh, eh. I can always say that you're, you know, the way you think you're proving is just, you know, it's just made up. In other words, what you're trying to, what you're, what you're telling me is, come on, don't be ridiculous, right? This is not Mars, and everybody knows it. But, but, the statement that anything is possible is true. You know, when, you get, when you discuss theology or anything, it's, it's always possible to say, you know, unless it's really you know, empirical, everything is purely empirical, you always say, listen, come on, this is made up, and that's made up, and this is made up, and maybe this whole thing, maybe, maybe, maybe I don't exist, maybe I don't exist. Maybe you don't exist, right? Prove that you don't exist. Prove that you do exist, right? You understand? In other words, we, 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 we need to follow some type of reasonable way of thinking and, and, and sorting evidence and, and communicating. You, we'd all agree, right? Well, thankfully for us, the American legal system has a term that I believe probably everyone in this room knows. It's, a, it's like a, it's, it's a line that we all recognize to be a manageable way to, to deal with you know, evidence and you know, philosophical reality. And, 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 and this works in, any, in, any, in any, you know, any discussion in trying to sort through evidence and see if something is true. Okay? The phrase goes, proof beyond a You see, I told you you knew it. Beyond a reasonable doubt. You see? That is an expression that's so important for us. We can only prove something beyond a reasonable doubt. The guy's holding a smoking gun, and there are 100 witnesses, right? And uh, everyone, maybe it's possible that, OK, maybe. But what are, you gonna, what are we going to do with that guy? We're going to put him in the electric chair, right? But, may, but maybe the moon crashed at that second, and it was all a, maybe. But you know what? We, we can only prove something beyond a reasonable doubt. You get it. That's really important, OK? So that's the, that's the way we have to look at this responsibly. Again, like, like, like we would look at anything, OK? So now, now, if I challenge you, if I would challenge you, OK, let's find someone else. What's your name? Jordan, OK? I'd say, listen, Moshe Schwartz was the first president of the United States. You say George Washington. Would you, would you take a bet with me? You betting man, Jordan? All right. How about if I say, listen, I, if I win and Moshe Schwartz was the president of the United States, you give me $1,000. If you win, I'll give you $1,000. You'll take the bet? How about an uneven bet? If you win that it was George Washington, I'll pay you $1,000. If I win that it was Moshe Schwartz, you pay me $10 million. Would you take that bet? Really? You take that bet? Why? Did you see it? Ah. So in other words, if I ask you, do you have faith? Do you have faith that George Washington was the first president of the United States? Or you know it? I know it. You know it? Even without seeing it? Sure. Well, this man is willing to take an, an uneven bet, right? He's very confident. <laughs> is anyone here from Toronto? He's very, very confident, OK? He would take that bet, because he knows it. He's sure of it. He's sure of it. OK. Now, how is it that you know that George Washington was the first president of the United States? Jordan is telling me, because millions of people, millions of people were there. They witnessed it. They described it. They transmitted it to their children. Uh, it goes into the historical record as a historical fact, not as a legend. Now, legends, like I said, I just want to clarify one final time. Legend, what about you know, the cherry tree? Millions of people know about it. Sure, sure. But they know about it that it's a story. They don't know about it that millions of people saw that. You with me, Eden? That's a really important distinction, really important. You get it? We all know about that, but it's like a joke. You know, it's something we talk about. Millions of people talk about it. But it's not something that millions of people say, oh, millions of people saw. That's the difference between a historical fact and a legend. So 
How do we know that God spoke at Mount Sinai? Millions of people saw it, heard God speak at Mount Sinai, make the claim, and, and, and taught it to their children. Now, I want to show you something, okay? I'm really jumping ahead of myself in the class, but you're going to forgive me, okay? I'm going to skip ahead, so just do me a favor. Do me a favor. Don't look at what I'm doing here for a second. Don't look, don't look, don't look, don't look. Don't look. I told you not to look. Okay? Check this out. Here, look, let, let's look at it. Let's look at Deuteronomy for a second, okay? Moshe, Moses is speaking to the Jewish people, and he says, I'm going to look, just going to look at some of the highlights, okay? Look, beware lest you forget the things that your eyes have beheld, lest you remove them from your heart all the days of your life. Make them known to your children and your children's children the day that you stood before Hashem, your God, at Mount Sinai, Horeb. When God said to me, gather the people to me and I shall let them hear my words. Look at the next highlight. Hashem spoke to you from amidst the fire at Mount Sinai. You get that. And then Moses speaks again, and he says, has, ever, has the people ever heard the voice of God speaking from the midst of the fire, as you have heard? The next highlight. From heaven he caused you to hear his voice. Now this is critical. Picture the scene, okay? Picture the scene. The Jewish people are standing there. This is after Mount Sinai. They're in the desert. There are millions of people. Millions of Jews are gathered together and Moses is speaking to them. And he says, hey guys, remember the time that God spoke to us at Mount Sinai? Remember that? Amazing. Don't ever forget that. Teach it to your children. Now let's say Moses is lying. Could he, could he can, like, pull the wool over their eyes and just make pretend that this is true and expect them to accept that? What do you say, guys? Millions of people are listening to him. He's like, hey guys, remember? What would happen? Would they accept this? Would they accept this, would they accept this idea and teach it to their children forever? No way. Guys, how about the Passover Seder? Right? Would you agree that the Passover Seder is the most popular Jewish practice annually? Raise your hand if you go to a Jewish Seder, a, a Pesach Seder, excuse me. Right? I would say that you would agree it's the most popular event. Do you know that they had Passover Seders just right after they left Egypt? You get it? The next year they had a Passover Seder. Can you imagine? Right? This is like, what, 10 months after Mount Sinai? And they're sitting around the Passover Seder, and, and Gramp, Grampy Gramps is telling the story. Oh, we left Egypt, you know, uh, you know, 10 months ago. Remember? And then we got to Mount Sinai, and God spoke to us. Could you imagine, you know, little David sitting there? But Grandpa, I don't remember that. Right? <laughs> Could we be like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Would they accept that? No way. You hear that? No way. We're talking about millions of people, not just accepting it, but accepting it and transmitting it, perpetuating it to their children forever. Millions of people. They'd say, you're making this up. Right? This is, you made up a story, Gramps. OK? So now, this is the claim of national revelation. OK, now we're going we're to clarify this more. But just, you know, just, just Principally, just understand it, okay? A claim of a, a millions of people witnessing, having witnessed something and passing it down, that is grounds for something which is verifiable and departs from the concept of legend. Really important. It's verifiable and therefore becomes a, what we would call a historical fact, witnessed by eyewitnesses of millions, of millions of people. Now, I'm waiting for you guys to ask me the question, Rabbi, you're so naive. Haven't you ever heard of LSD? Come on, <laughs> Rabbi, it was a giant rave. Come on, guys. Rabbi, get with the program. You know what I'm saying? Have you been to a Grateful Dead concert? You know what I'm saying? Mushrooms. That's what was happening. It was a massive trip with just a big conspiracy, right? Everyone was hypnotized. Well. I have two important responses to that fair question. First of all, let's get back to Moshe Schwartz. Maybe George Washington is just some big, you know, rave as well. Maybe it's just a mass conspiracy. You know what I'm saying? They had the Boston Tea Party, you hear what I'm saying? Okay? And maybe all those people back there, they were, they were also, do, you know, doing their thing. How do you know? 
Important question, right? How do you know this is true? How do you know it's a fair question? You need to ask, responsibly, you need to ask this question. How do you know it's true? So number one, number one, by making that statement, you're saying, listen, we don't necessarily need to agree to something verifiable eyewitnesses. Well, by the same logic, I'm just repeating myself, you can question right, and contest the George Washington claim, right? Just understand, by the same logic, you can say, listen, that's also verifiable, millions of people, maybe it's not true. So you, you, you wander into the waters of beyond, beyond a reasonable doubt. Everyone get that? Everyone understand that? Okay? So once you, once you get into beyond a reasonable doubt, that's already, you know, into the, into the unreasonable doubt. Right? Once you get into the unreasonable doubt, so then maybe we're on Mars, right? That's number one. Number two, and this is more important, and this relates to your questions, okay? This is the, probably maybe the most important uh, piece of information here. And that is as follows. Uh, and that is that, uh, historically, there's an axiom that I want to share with you. Okay? In the study of history, um, there's a principle that it's not possible to fool large numbers into believing something. It's not possible to fool large numbers of people into believing that they, uh, that they witnessed something. It's not possible. One second. Let me explain myself. Okay? It's impossible. I'll repeat it. It's impossible. It's an, this is a rule in history. It's impossible to fool, to create a hoax, to create a large number of people, eyewitnesses, to say that they saw something, right? and then that thing is proven to be not true. It's never happened. Okay? As the way you can only study, you have to study history responsibly. Let's study how history works. Right? In other words, you cannot fabricate a, na a, a, a national event and sell it to people. And if you'd like to argue, like some of the people who I see their eyes are getting wide, if you'd like to argue that it is possible, I challenge you to find me one example in world history where an entire nation, we're talking millions of people, witnessed something to be true, right? the eyewitness account that they saw it was true, and then it ended up being proven that it wasn't true. You get it? In other words, I don't know, you know, the, you know, uh, the, war, the war in 1812 is really a hoax. Right? We found out later that it was not a that was, you know, the Civil War was really a hoax. We found out it was a, Has there ever been anything like that? Large numbers of people, right? Now, a colleague of mine, I'll just tell you this, a colleague of mine, who I spoke to about this class, he said he's been he's teaching this class for 30 years challenging his audiences for 30 years about this challenge, not once. And by the way, you don't, have to you don't have to answer me now. Go home, go to your schools, go to your professors, go to your history professors, come back to me, right? And, and, and let me know, let me know of such an event. The, 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 like I say, it hasn't happened. Go ahead, you're in the back. Well, the, the, his hand is up. Yeah. They were right. For Absolutely. What's that called? Propaganda. Right? So pro that's a great question. Listen carefully, my friends, right? Propaganda, right? The 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 the, the Germans are being fed this information from Hitler. No, right? Know. From Hitler and his cabinet, right? And Joseph Goebbels, right? Being taught this idea that Jews are vermin, Jews are not Jews are disgusting, evil. That's true. That absolutely happened. Make, let's, make, let's, let's make it very clear and understand. The Germans didn't witness any statement by God. There's one man's evil, wicked thinking and his propaganda, propagandizing, if that's a word, and influencing millions of people to recognize a belief. This has nothing to do with an eyewitness account of an experience. Does that make sense to you? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's, again, we're, it's, we're talking about, you know, he was an incredible orator, c convincing other people of, of propaganda, right? But just, you have to think about it, okay? It, it's a completely different arena than what we're describing here. 
Just think, think about it. Do it. Get, go ahead. So with what you're asking about people witnessing yeah. and then changing, I mean, then it gets dropped in the idea of conspiracy. Right. Right. So then it's disproven, but then you, if you if the inevitable, you can't actually answer if it's something did or didn't occur. Right. The JFK. But, that, exa but that, exactly. No, but, that, but then again, again, you get into something. You know what? Maybe, uh, like, like I say, you can challenge anything. Right. Maybe George Washington wasn't. Maybe it's a big conspiracy. Maybe. But we can only go by, we can only prove something beyond a reasonable doubt. You get it? Here's my problem. I love your questions, and I'm happy to take them. I just, I'd love to finish the class, so I'm a little torn here. Okay? Maybe I'll take a couple more, and then, they can, I know what's going to happen. Someone's going to walk in the door and say, you have to stop. stop. Right, and then I'm going to be in trouble. Okay, so I'll take one or two more, and then you, you're welcome after the class to talk to me. Go ahead. She's first. Wow, what a gentleman. Go ahead. You'll talk after class. Go ahead. Whoever, it's not yeah. Uh, it's not the whole idea of the Alfred Dreyfus trial is that they found um, evidence that he was, they found documents that he had checked and stuff that he was actually signing and planted that kind of evidence. So everyone had a sort of an eyewitness testimony to what he did, but at the end of the day, he didn't end, you know, this was all fabricated. Okay, so, so what's I, that's what I'm saying. What is eyewitness? It's one person's claim versus a lot, a lot of people. Eyewitnesses is a, millions of people. That's, a, that's called eyewitness claim, as opposed to one person making a claim. We're getting at that right now. We're getting at that right now. Believe. No, they saw the evidence. No, but that's not, but that's exactly, that's not, that's, not, that's incorrect. That's not eyewitness evidence. That's not, I, we'll get to that right now. We'll get to that. I, gotta, I gotta move forward. I gotta move forward. You lost me after class. I'm just gonna lose my class, okay? So now, let's compare, I'm getting to you right here. Let's compare Judy, Judaism's claim, okay, of national revelation to, to other religions and their claim of what I'll call individual <laughs> revelation. Okay, instead of national revelation, we'll call it individual revelation. Okay, where one person, uh, where one person, that's an E, where one person makes a claim that God spoke to them. This is really important. How many religions are there in the world, my friends? Yeah, they're like, what? Check these out. Something like five... I don't know, let's say 5,000, 5, right? And over all of human history, a lot, a lot of religions in the world, right? Okay, you can check out some of them on the board. Plenty of religions in the world, right? Okay, how many of them make the claim of national revelation, and how many of them make the claim of individual revelation? Christianity individual. Christianity individual, okay, that's one. Well, let me ask you this. What's a better claim? National revelation or individual revelation? You're trying to get people to, get, get people to believe that you're a prophet, right? You get people to believe that you're like, you're the, you're the religion? What do you say? What's a better claim? National, National religion. No, no question about it, right? If you were trying to start a religion, what would you say? National religion, you have to, right? For sure. For sure. Well, like you guys are saying, right, there's only one nation in the world that the Jewish people that make the claim, only one, only one nation that make the claim and that have ever made the claim of national revelation, that's the Jewish people who say, like you saw here, three million people saw, heard God speak at Mount Sinai. Now here's the obvious question. What are they, dumb? I mean, these guys who invent, these ingenious guys who invent other religions, they might be a lot of things, but they're not dumb. Okay, in fact, some of them are, re some of them are really, really shrewd uh, businessmen. You get it? Okay, why in the world would they make a claim of individual revelation? You know what individual revelation means? God spoke to me. I'm his new prophet. Listen to me. Give me all your money. Bow down to me. You get it? Is that verifiable? Is that verifiable? No way. Is that a historical fact? Or does that fall into legend? It's not verifiable. Why in the world would you make such a silly, non-credible claim? I mean, think about it. With the women in the room, please forgive me. Why would you pick up a girl, right, in a Volkswagen if you could pick a girl up in a Ferrari? What are you, a dummy? You get it? Just make the claim of national revelation. It's a million times better claim. What's the answer? What's the answer? Nice. Wow, you're smart. And who's your father? Oh, here he is. All right, smart guy. Okay, good. Okay, uh, here's the point. 
Okay, listen guys, let's play the believability game for a second, okay? Let's go back to Prince Shaq, okay, quickly, Prince Edward and Prince Charles. There they are, okay? Could you imagine, instead of the scenario that I described earlier, Prince Shaq shows up the next, right, one morning and he says, guys, here's the news. You remember that dad came to us last night during dinner and the sky opened up, and then the ceiling in our palace opened up. We were having dinner, all of us, remember? And then Dad came down and he said, Shaq is the new king. Remember that happened? I'm the, I'm the man. I'm the new king. What do you think Prince Edward and Charles would say? Oh, Come on, Shaq. You're high again. You know what I'm saying? No way. No way. What do you mean? We're sitting right there. We know that that didn't happen. Guys, Here's the point. This is going to be shocking, and I, I always sometimes I get a little nervous about offending some people here. But you gotta you gotta look at this logically. You gotta look at the facts as they are. The claims the the, the claims of non uh, of individual revelation of all the other nations of the world, those are non credible claims, non verifiable claims. They're no different than Prince Shaq, right? Saying here, I'm the I'm the man. I'm the man. I'm the man. You couldn't possibly say, hey, everybody saw God speak to me, because although you could get, listen carefully to these words, although you could get people, you could sucker and fool people into accepting a non-verifiable claim with no evidence, shocking as it is, but look in the world and you see it's true, one thing's for sure, one thing's for sure that it's impossible. You can never, ever get people to accept something against evidence. You can get someone, in other words, you can get someone to take a leap of faith. You can never get someone to take a leap of lies. You get it? You saw God speak to me. What are you, nuts? I did not. So it's impossible to make that claim. If you make, anyone who makes that claim, they're going to be written off right away. So you know what, the, you know what these people, you know what the, the, the claims of these religions are? They make the, 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 the individual revelation claim. God came to me. Guys, my friends, I don't mean to, like I told you, I don't mean to offend anyone, but just, just think about what you're saying. Let's take Joseph Smith, okay? Think about it. He's walking through the Nevada desert. There he is, okay? Okay? He's walking through the Nevada desert, and son of the gun, believe it or not, right there in the desert, in Nevada, are the tablets. Now, how the heck they got, how they got to Nevada? It's a little, you know, from the Sinai Desert, but whatever, they're there. And he's behind the screen, and God speaks to him. He says, you're the man, Joseph, whoa! And then he's like, he gives him all kinds of rules, and then by the time he shows up, I don't know, the, the tablets got lost. But I am the new prophet of God. Believe in me. Give me your cash. I'm the man, right? <laughs> would you believe that? How many people do you think would believe such a thing? Millions. My dear friends, <laughs> my dear friends, what's it called? Mormonism, can you believe that claim? It's just unbelievable. Guys, you make your own decision. I'm not telling you what to do. I'm not brainwashing anyone, but think about that. Would you believe that? Muhammad shows up and says, hey, I went up on a horse to God, and I'm the man. I'm the prophet. The question that we really, just intellectually, logically need to ask is, like, how the heck could people believe? <clears throat> how, excuse me. <clears throat> how the heck could people believe in those religions? Not how they can't. What do you mean, how they can't? You get it? In other words, just logically, Judaism makes a credible, verifiable claim. Verifiable claim. And I have another question. I have another something to think about with you. Just taking a step back for a moment. Consider the true, the real, sincere truth seeker, okay? Here's a guy, all he wants to do is believe in God and do the right thing, right? Give God a little, you know, nachas. Okay? Yeah, okay? All he wants to do is the right thing. You get it? Raise your hand if you believe that God you know, gave you a brain. Raise your hand. Raise your hand. Okay, for those who don't raise your hand, please see me after class. Okay? <laughs> so if you raise your hand, you say, God gave us the ability to think logically. Could you consider the fact that God would put us in the position, God, who wants us to serve him, he wants us to serve him, right? To be nice, good boys and girls, to do the right thing, right? Could you believe that he'd put us in a position where there are 5,000 religions all saying, we're the truth, we're the truth, leap of, leap of faith, leap of faith, believe me, believe vampirism, we are the true God. Could you believe that God would put us in a position, create the world and put us in a position where there's no way to figure out 
There's no way to figure out who the real God is. You understand that? It's just absurd. But there's a giant chasm, a huge gulf of difference between Judaism as, fa- as, a, as, a, as a religion and all other religions in the world. All other. And I must tell you that the verse that we saw on the, before on the board pr- openly presents this. The Bible says no, Hashem says no other nation has ever made this claim and no one ever will make this claim. Can you believe what an amazing statement? No one will ever make the claim of national revelation? Now, the first time I heard that, I'm like, wow, that's amazing. What a prediction. Wow, genius prediction. And then I was talking to my friend. He was like, what do you mean? That's the dumbest, that's the easiest prediction. Anyone can make such a prediction. You know why? Because like I told you, it's an axiom of history. It's impossible to make such a claim without it being true. You get it. Just think about it. It's a, it's a, it's a little bit of an advanced idea. Just think about that. It's an imp- imp- I promise you, if, if it was possible to fool large numbers of people, Paul would have done the same thing. What do you think? These guys are dumb? Anyway, what? If it's possible, so, sh- so how come no one's ever done it? Show me there should be a hundred religions that are, are pulling the wool over people's eyes. How come there aren't over thousands of years of history? That never. Only one? Because like I said, it's, it's an axiom, it's a principle of history. It's impossible to, to, to create a hoax and fool millions of people into eyewitnessing something if it's not true. The only reason why we know that George Washington, or whatever it is, right, or the Civil War is because there were millions of people who saw it. And it's never been, like I said, it's, we've never experienced such an, uh, 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 we've never seen such an idea that the, it comes out that the, 18, the War of 1812 was a hoax. The Civil War was a hoax. Or the revelation at Mount Sinai was a hoax. And that's why billions of Christians and Muslims and people all over, all over the world believe it to be true. Amazing. Amazing. Now, now, I, I know you really want to ask a question. I just, I, I, I'm stuck. There's, there's not enough time. There's not enough time for me. There's not enough time for me. Okay. Now, I just want to make, a, I just want to make another point, and then, and then I guess we'll close. Up. We'll close up. Okay. And that is as follows. There's another question that, this, I guess this will be the final question that sometimes people can ask, and that is, hold it. Maybe that Bible that you're showing me was introduced later on. Maybe, thank you, see that? We're, we think alike. Okay, maybe that Bible was introduced later on in history. Some guy showed up. We'll give him a name. I don't know, you know. Bob, all right? Let's say Bob shows up with a Bible. We'll call, you know, we'll, let's call him Ezra Bob, okay? Just for, just for fun. We'll call him Ezra Bob. Maybe he shows up with a, with a Torah scroll one day. And he says, hey! And the Jews are like, hey! And they're like, what's in the scroll, Rabbi? He's like, eh, nothing. He's like, come on, tell us what's in the scroll. Oh, just a story about how God took us you know, out of Egypt and spoke to all of us at Mount Sinai. Now, stop for a moment. I just want to, you know, for the educated people in the world, in the room, I just want to, I just want to, I just want to take a moment to tell you there's something called the Septuagint, okay, which, details aside, essentially proves that the Torah, as a Torah document, I don't see the Chumash in front of me, but the Torah scroll as a document is everyone agrees, even outside historians and the Greek historian, and the secular historians, everybody agrees is a, is a book which is 2,000 years old. Everyone agrees about that. You just understand that. So when we're describing that maybe it was introduced later in history, it's only in about 1,000 years between the time that Sinai happened and the Septuagint. Okay? So make that clear. So we're only dealing with the possibility of 1,000 years of tamper uh, opportunity. Okay? So let's say... This guy, Ezra Bob, Ezra Bob, shows up and says, hey, you know, look at this. here's what it says in the Bible. Okay? Would the Jewish people believe him and accept this document to be true and, and, and pass it to their children? So let me ask you the following question. Anyone here go to college? I'm glad to hear it. Anyone here t- take history? Yeah, raise your hand. Raise your hand. What's your name? Tom, Tom what did you get in your final grade? Uh, what was your final grade in the school? What was your final grade in history? You got an A? I'm sure you got an A. Okay, so let me ask you the following question. What happened to the United States of America in 1645? On North America in 1645. Yeah, what happened? You forgot that part. Okay, fine, it's okay. I'm just playing with you. Well, here's, here's the news, okay? Tom, here's the news. I got, I got, I, I'll prove it, okay? What happened was, listen carefully, in 1645 in North America, the entire continent actually sank under water. It was underwater for four months. All human beings adapted to underwater living conditions. 
They lived underwater, and four months later, it bubbled back up, and life resumed as normal. Do you believe me? No. I'm telling the truth. Look. New York Times reports it. <laughs> How do you know? You're saying it's not true. Anyone think it's true? How do you know it's not true? Well, first of all, the New York Times reports it. You can assume it's not necessarily the truth. Okay? That's the first reason. Okay? That's the first reason you know it's not true. But the, how, do you, how else do you know it's not true? Humans Eden. Okay, but maybe, that's, maybe that was a miracle. That's what happened. How do you know it's not true? Come on, guys. Okay, if it were true that, the, that, the, you not, that North America was underwater, you get it? Whatever it was, 300 years ago, you would, have, you would have heard about it. Come on, come on. You would have heard about it. So let's say, right, this Ezra Bob dude shows up and says, hey, God spoke to 3 million people 500 years ago. Remember, remember, remember? No. What are you, you just trying to sell me down the river here? No way, right? If it were not true, they would never believe it. Not only that, this is, has been what's perpet this idea of revelation on Mount Sinai was perpetuated from Mount Sinai itself, like it said in the Bible. Make sure to teach it to your children, teach it to your children, teach it to your children, tell them the story. And millions of people, right, over thousands of years, have recognized it to be true. Okay? So uh, and like and like I'm saying, if Ezra real like I said before, if Ezra Bob was really fooling the nation. Maybe he wrote this document, right? And he tricks an entire nation, an entire nation into believing this idea and dupe them. He would have to be an idiot to say, hey, nobody's ever going to dupe an entire nation into believing it's true. Why would he be an idiot saying that? Because he just did it, right? I know my time is up. I'm finishing right now. Um, um, I told you guys. I told you. It's their fault, okay? So one second. No, please don't. Please don't. Okay, so... Um, um, if, if, uh, if that were true, he'd never be able to say, hey, it's never going to happen again because he just did it. You get it? Yeah. He just did it himself. You get it? You, you follow what I'm saying? So if he fooled, and like I said before, we should find plenty of people who are fooling plenty of, of nations into trying to believe something like this. It's an impossible claim uh, to trick people into. So in short, natural revelation is the one lie that you can, simply cannot get away with. You, it's an event that you simply cannot fabricate. The only way to make this claim is if it really happened, as we, believe, as we say it did on Mount Sinai 3,000 years ago. My time is up. Thank you for listening. Whoever wants to ask me questions uh, can do that outside uh, right now. God bless you. Thanks for listening. <laughs>